Welcome to the Word on Woodward presented by PointsBet, an official gaming partner of the Detroit Tigers, Detroit Red Wings, and Little Caesars Arena. I'm Danielle LaRousse, alongside Art Regner and today's guest, Tigers pitcher Tyler Alexander. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you. A lot of interesting subjects to talk about. The first one is the stash, because that's different from the last time I saw you, which was yesterday. So you shaved that overnight. And it seems like everyone's going with the stash lately. We had Kyle Funkhauser up here. We talked about Jake Rogers' stash, who I hear has actually shaved it but he'll be back with it he'll be back with it are you just trying to compete with the two of those guys is what's going on here with the stash trend no i mean roger's roger's trying to get me to grow it out uh it was his thing so i kind of let him have it while he was here uh he was crazy how, how recognizable he was with that mustache um but no i had the goatee it ran its course uh it was it was long and and i needed to change it up so uh we'll see how long the mustache lasts so this is not a superstitious thing that the Tigers are have turned their season around since the beginning of April and you know mustaches started to appear so no one's saying I'm not shaven until you know until the season's over until because we're winning. No we actually did this thing in the bullpen um, a couple months ago where we were like hey we're all going to go goatees that was going to be our thing. <laughs> Can and everybody grow a, a goatee? <laughs> most to the people Derek can't really grow very good facial hair he needs a I don't know if you remember like a long time ago his his mustache that he had in the World Series he he likes to brag about how good it was it was, it was nothing <laughs> all right well we will ask you some actual baseball questions so let's get right into that you have recently taken on the role for the Tigers of a starting pitcher which you had referred to yourself as a utility reliever earlier in the season and I think every bullpen pitcher has had to take on some sort of different role this season. But like I said, you have taken on that of a starter. And back on August 7th in your start, you went a full five innings and you said you considered that your first actual start. Now you were actually a starter. What adjustments did you have to make and why was that five inning mark your benchmark? Well, I had a lot of issues in the first inning um, when I when I moved to the starting role. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'd given up. I think six runs and in, in two starts in, in the first inning. Uh, and for me, it was, you know, try, it was getting back into that, that reliever's mentality, even as a starter. It was like, in my mind, I'm telling myself to, to close the first inning. Um, and then I go out for the second inning and close the second inning. And, and, and in my mind, try to keep it one inning at a time, um, as opposed to saving pitches and saving stuff and trying to last as long as I can. Um, and then once I got through the first inning, um, you know, it's, it's just the same mentality as I've, I've always had. Now, what I find interesting is that, you know, you start long relief, short relief, whatever needs to be done. And I know, hey, next guy up and you're a team guy and whatever the team needs. I completely understand that. But how difficult, how much of a mental strain is that, and how does it affect your pitching? I mean, if, if you're short relief, maybe if one pitch is working, you can get by on that and get guys out. Yet if you know you have to go longer, do you, know, is it, do you talk to Chris Fetter about it, or, or do you just sit there and psych yourself up? Because it seems like you almost have to play a mental game with yourself based on whatever your role is that at any given day. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, I've joked and I've, I've said that I'm a, a utility relief pitcher. I would say that I'm just a utility pitcher in general. Um, I've, I've pitched in every role. I have started before this year. I've, I've had a bunch of starts. Um, so I've done that in the big leagues. I've done long relief. I've done one inning relief. I've thrown in the eighth inning of a two run ball game. I've kind of kind of have to be prepared for everything um and i and throughout my career i i do have a bunch of pitches i'm not like a normal relief pitcher i, mm -hmm. I throw five different pitches so right so when i do slide into the starting role that i that benefits me for sure well you know I, and the reason i'm asking this is because it, it seems that you're you're, I remember when Gardy was here and, and then AJ, they all say that you want to be a starter, though. You know, if you talk to Tyler Alexander, he wants to be a starter. And I guess maybe I'm looking at it. Doesn't every pitcher really want to be a starter? Isn't that really the ultimate goal? <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course you want to be a starter. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to be in the big leagues no matter what. Um, and we'll do anything to do that. But, you know, as a starter, there's more... 
There's more room for error, I guess I, I would right. say one thing. I mean, you, you get to pitch more. You're on a schedule. There's a lot of things um, that benefit you there. As a reliever, you don't know when you're going to throw, but a lot of people like that. I didn't mind not knowing when I was going to throw. The adrenaline rush you get when they call your name is awesome. Um, but as a starter, it's easier to be on a routine. Um, so, I mean, and obviously you get paid more. Yeah. So. That's always a nice little perk, there we right? Go. All right. There, there, and there's your answer. <laughs> In a so, nutshell. Well, you've done Thank it you, all. Tyler. You've done it all. Like you said, you really have done it all, especially this season, as I mentioned earlier. Tiger, The Tigers' bullpen has had to be ready to go at any given moment because a lot has happened throughout the season, as it does for most baseball teams. But what has the mentality been throughout the entire bullpen, not just you personally? How have you guys kind of come together to handle everything that's been thrown at you? It's been fun. Like we, as a bullpen, we, for the majority of us have been together for over a year now. Um, there's a few new pieces here and there, but um, it's, you know, as a bullpen member, you literally have to be ready whenever mm -hmm. and your role can change. And especially with the new coaching staff to start the year, they're trying to get a feel as to when you should pitch and, and you're trying to feel them out about when they're going to throw you. So it's, it's hard to get in routine early, but I think now we've kind of slotted into everybody the roles are always changing right. throughout the season, but uh, everybody's kind of got a role as of now, so it's mm -hmm. it's easier to stay in a routine and, and be prepared in that way. Yeah, I know we're jumping around a little bit, but I have to ask you this. You were originally drafted by the Tigers in the 23rd round in the two, 2013 draft out of Carroll High School in Texas. Yep. You didn't sign with them. You, became, you went to t TCU, Texas Christian University. Two years later, the Tigers draft you in the second round. Is your reaction like, fellas, can't you take a hint? I don't, <laughs> I mean, I've already turned you down once. I, you know, I mean, what, what was it like? Or are you like psyched up saying, wow, man, Detroit must really want me again. They're drafting me. It was cool. So uh, when I was in high school, I didn't really expect to get drafted high enough. You know, they asked mm -hmm. me, what, what is your number? Like, what will you sign for? And I gave them this ridiculous number. <laughs> Uh, especially for what I was in high school, I wasn't worth that. And, and fully expecting to go to college. And I wanted to go to college. Um, and so when the Tigers drafted me, David Chad actually called me and he said, hey, he didn't even give me an offer. He said, hey, uh, uh, we're just building a relationship with you. Um, we'll see you in two years. I said, okay, thanks for drafting me. That's awesome. Wow. And uh, two years later, David Chad called me and you know, we had that relationship moving forward. And he took me in the second round. So well, let me ask you this. I mean, you said that you talked to him, right? And he says, we'll see you in two years. They wanted to build that relationship. Over that two years, were you still in contact with the Tigers organization at all? No. No. I mean, I'm sure they kept tabs on me, especially like my freshman year of college where I'm not draft eligible. So you, you look and, and see how I'm developing, but you don't really – look too hard you got you got a whole different other guys to draft in that in that season and then my sophomore year I was draft eligible so I'm sure they kept an eye on me and I talked to David uh Chad then and a bunch of other area scouts at the time um and we kept in contact that year but for a year it was pretty much just like hey develop good luck have fun and it was fun Doug Fister <laughs> one of my all-time favorite Tiger pitchers you know, as a matter of fact, I, I love they superimposed the Joe Lewis fist and Fister in front of it, throwing a ball. And, you know, I just, you know, he was really, really, he really connected when he was traded to the Tigers. You and Fist obviously have something in common. You both have struck out 19, or pardon me, nine consecutive batters. Uh, it's the American League record you share with Fister, and it's also the record major league baseball record for a reliever can you take us back to august 2nd when against the cincinnati reds are you aware of it are people telling you did you know that you were on a streak so the weird thing about that is like I'm, i don't really strike a lot of people out like historically throughout my whole career um i've struck out the side like maybe one or two times here and there and so I really like I knew that how many in a row that I, I, I had going. I didn't think it was a big deal because I had no idea what the record was. Um, and I had no idea I tied the record until after I got nine. I came in the dugout um, and they announced it with nobody in the stands. They announced <laughs> it over the PA system that I tied the record. 
and I went out for a fourth inning and I, I, I hit the first guy in the wrist. Um, so I didn't get 10. So they should have never told you, huh? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Don't I don't know. You shake your hand up like that. <laughs> but, no, I mean, I, I've never struck out a lot of guys, and it was just kind of like the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't think I was throwing any different. Then I might have had a better slider at the mm-hmm. time. But other than I mean, they took a – swung through a lot of bad pitches. I mean, I made mistakes yeah. along the way. They just – they didn't get hit. That's really cool. I, I did see you mentioned that you don't strike that many guys out. Doug Fister didn't really strike yeah. many guys <laughs> yeah. out either, and you both are tied for the American leading record in consecutive strikeouts. So it yeah, had to be a pretty interesting cool. conversation. No, he said the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned that I don't strike people out. He's like, dude, I don't either. And we were like, well, then what happened? We're like, I don't know. <laughs> Throw enough strikes, eventually they'll just miss them. I love that. We have talked about Chris Fetter a couple of times, and when we had Kyle Funkhauser up here, like I told you we had him last time, Um to us, Chris Fetter is like a man of mystery because he doesn't talk too much. Art jokes around that he's a hologram, you know, but all of you love him and his his style of coaching. So personally, how has he helped you? He's brought it's like the the analytical, which is like the new age baseball stuff. Um, he's brought that in mm-hmm. with a good combination of feel and, and understanding of, of pe- how people pitch and 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 and. Uh, uh, Juan Nieves uh-huh. helps with that as well. He's he's like the old school, trying to learn the new school type of stuff, and he's very good with, with just the kind of I would say like the eye test, like being able to look at you and, and maybe if you need a little help here and there, changing things mechanically or or just grips or any, stuff like that. And and Fett's the the, anal, the analytical stuff that Fed has brought has has been great. You know, I, I've learned a lot in that regard about my my pitches, and it's not. It's not always where to throw it, but it's like with with what you have, like with what that pitch is, is where, where is it most effective? Yeah. Is he able to break it down rather easily for you? You know, when I hear metrics and stuff, I'm thinking, oh God, is this like math class? What are we? What, what are we doing? It's been tough for me to that, do that too, because I'm I was so kind of stuck in my ways where it was just like, oh, because because my analytically I'm I'm not very good. Um, my like spin rates aren't that great. My vertical horizontal break and all that kind of stuff is just average, um, which is fine, you know. Uh, and I I don't pitch how a normal pitcher would would throw because I don't throw hard. I don't have crazy breaking balls, but I can sort of th- throw five pitches wherever I want. Um, and analytically, that's not pretty. Um, but what he's done is is he's he's taught me with what I have. Uh, where to throw it and when to throw it, which has been very helpful. I know you're really tight with your teammates. This Tiger team really seems to have a bond, which is great because it's infectious and the whole city feels that way. They feel that they're part of this connection and bond you have. Yet, when you played against Baltimore, you pitched against your buddy Spencer Watkins, who you do know really, really (laughs) well. And I'm wondering, is it a bittersweet moment or do you say, I hope I win the game one nothing, and we both pitch a complete game and we both strike out 10 guys or whatever. I mean, or, or is it, you know, hey, between the lines, you know, no love lost here. We, I, I just got to win. You know, that's, I, I wish success for him. And I think it's awesome that he's in the big leagues. I think it's amazing that we got to start against each other. Um, I hope he does well, but one start won't kill him, you know. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're becoming my yeah, all-time I mean, favorite. I, I, answers. I, I really, and I and I'm being genuine here. I love that. No, I, mean, I hope he does great. I hope he has, but a not long, against you. Yeah, I hope he has exactly. a long, great I'm career. That. One start won't kill. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with that. I love the competitive mindset. All right. I do too. I mean, my my God, man, this would be great. Do you have a motivational book or anything we can buy? He's like, I shouldn't write a book. I think that's what just. <laughs> but anyway, Tyler, we'll wrap it up with this. So you found some success this season. What are your goals moving forward? How do you want to finish off this season? Well, you know, I, I want to be an innings eater. That's yeah. that's been my whole goal the whole year. You know, whatever role I'm in, I'm sure. I'm sure my role will change too. We have a lot of guys coming back. They're going to be healthy. I don't know what I'll be here in about a month, maybe less. Um, so I just want to be an innings eater, and I want to throw up zeros in any in any role that it is. Um, are you a big fan of the movie The Wedding Crashers? Or yeah, yeah, it's a great movie. 
It, it, I'm be, glad he said this. I almost <laughs> forgot about I, uh, my favorite question. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm waiting for Daniela to ask this question. So, Daniela, please ask Tyler. Are you going to let me ask it? Yes, okay, yes. thank you, thank you. So, I'm reading up on Tyler Alexander, and I'm looking at the, Ty- or the, Tyler's, the Tiger's website, and your nickname on there officially is listed as Todd the Painter, which is a character in The Wedding Crasher. So, you got to tell us the story behind the nickname. Okay, so... <laughs> It's really not that long of a story. Um, when I was when I was a freshman in college, I had a real long hair, um, and it was just kind of down in my face, greasy a little bit. And um, some of my college teammates told me, "He's like, uh, hey, you kind of look like like Todd, you know, that guy from Wedding Crashers." And they thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and so I guess for the next eight years it's kind of stuck and it came with me so everybody in college called me Todd after that they thought it was the funniest thing and I don't know if like it was like at first I don't think it was a good thing I think they were making fun of me you know fair (laughs) but I saw I've just embraced it yeah Yeah, I've embraced it as my name now everybody just straight up calls me Todd even yeah all my teammates here really yeah all the coaching staff they all call me Todd um the only my parents my family don't they don't call me Todd they we have different names for each other but yeah, I would have been calling you Todd this whole interview if you yeah. had told me. Everybody that. just doesn't know. I, I don't know anybody. If somebody calls me by my name, Tyler, it's it's weird. It sounds oh, weird. Well, I'm glad you answered when we called yeah. you Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> have you looking around like, hey, yeah. Yeah. Tyler? Tyler? Yeah. I mean, how encouraging are you by this Tiger season? I, I, I think that you guys are seeing firsthand, and, and some of it has to do with the milestones that obviously Miguel Cabrera is uh, is accomplishing this year. You know, uh, quest for 3,000 hits, 500 home runs. Not a whole lot of guys in this game, and over like 19,000 have played Major League Baseball have been able to accomplish that. But I've always had this argument with friends of mine from around the country that Detroit is really a baseball city. I mean, they love the Tigers. It's the oldest team. It's been around as charter member of the American League, 1901. That old English D means something. I mean, it means something that even Tom Selleck wore it on Magnum PI all the time, that, that hat. I mean, do you, do you see it? I mean, do you, are you guys vibing that, wow, this, you know, we don't have to do much to get the appreciation of these fans? Yeah, so you can kind of tell the media is more involved. The fans are showing up more. They're louder. They're more excited. And, you know, we, we are a better baseball team. We're not where we want to be. We're still below 500. I think we can we can be a lot better. Um, I think we're going to continue to grow and be better with, with more experience. But uh, it's it's been fun starting to win a little bit more and, and seeing how the city reacts and how they show out for us. Um, it's cool. People are excited about the Tigers. That I can promise you. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much. I almost called you Todd. I don't know which one to call Thanks, him Todd. anymore. Appreciate Tyler, it. Todd, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> and a big thank you to PointsBet for presenting the Word on Woodward. PointsBet is an official gaming partner of the Detroit Tigers, Detroit Red Wings, and Little Caesars Arena. We'll see you next time.